Hey guys, so in this video we're going to be fixing some stuff. So this is a mix of things that I've noticed and also you guys have noticed, so thank you for that. And just in general, if you ever find something I'm doing poorly, feel free to let me know in the comments below and uh, we can fix it up. So we're going to start by uh, fixing Apollo Cogen. So we're using this in our controller package and what we're doing is generating TypeScript types with it. Now, in the last video that I did with it, I was actually using an incorrect version. So what I wanted to do is upgrade to the latest version and show you guys actually how it would work with that. Now, they actually changed how uh, Apollo Cogen works. So I guess this is perfect timing, is we can actually show you that. So they have created a new thing called uh, Apollo CLI. So this is, I guess, the, the thing that they're going forward with. So uh, you'll want to use this instead of Apollo Cogen for future things. And so we're going to be using this to add types. So I've already installed Apollo Cogen globally. And uh, we can see if I do Apollo V, I'm on 1.11. Um, and then I also installed it uh, as a dev dependency for my controller. So they should be on the same version. And if I look at the dev dependencies, we should see here's Apollo right here, 1.11. So now, I'm going to add uh, the code to actually go and download uh, the schema. So now there's there's two parts, right? The introspect and the generate. Apollo renamed it a little bit. You can type this and see. So now there's only three commands: code gen, help, and schema. We're going to be doing the schema command. If you type schema, you can see all the things that you can do. Specifically, the thing we care about right now is the download command to grab the schema. So we're going to say. Uh, Apollo schema download and then we can specify our endpoint right here now also if you want to you can either read the readme or if you just run the schema download like so um, okay I guess it tries to do it by default I was going to show you I guess dash H is what you have to do there's some other commands you can do for example uh, if you need a header or whatnot you can pass those in all right, so let's go ahead and download our schema. So I'm going to say endpoint, and I'm just going to bring this to the top, um, dash dash endpoint. And so we're on localhost 4000. And we don't need slash GraphQL at the end. So this is the endpoint of our server. Now, I don't have mine running right now, so you should see an error message that looks like this, cannot connect if you don't have your server up. So I'm just going to go to a different tab. And I'm going to say packages server and just do yarn start. Um, and then also, you want to make sure Redis and stuff is running. And now we are able to download the schema. And I think by default, it calls it schema.json and puts it right there, which is totally fine. Um, that's the place we want it. So I'm going to change our introspect right now. And I'm going to put this code in. And I'm going to call this schema download. So now I can just do yarn schema download. And uh, cool. So it runs the Apollo CLI tool correctly. All right. So the next thing is actually uh, generating the types like we have here. So again, we can just say Apollo. And I think it was, yep, cogen. Spelled correctly, cogen. Um, and then because of this fire command, we want to generate. You can see all the helpful little flags and whatnot. So there's a whole bunch of things you can specify. The ones we care about uh, are twofold. So the queries, uh, this is where your GraphQL queries are. In our case, they are in uh, index.tsx. In they're in our TypeScript files, so we cannot use the default because that just looks for GraphQL files. And then also our target, so this is the language we use. Uh, and then our schema are the three things, so we don't really care about anything else. All right, so let's go ahead and run that. And so I'm going to say queries, and this is basically what we want. So we're going to look inside of source, and I don't need that part. So I have to do quotations around this because I'm using fish shell. So it actually just gets messed up. So if I don't have quotations around, you'll notice the stars are yellow and it doesn't like it. So I wrap it like this. All right. So now it's going to check all my TypeScript files or all my 
uh, TypeScript files that have React code in it, and it's going to search for uh, the code. Other, other thing, the schema that we just created, and then our target is TypeScript, and I can just run that, and it'll generate types. Now you'll notice it created a new file in the uh, folder. So here is our code right here. So um, we were using a generated folder right there. Uh, now we're just using this thing right here, um, and that's register mutation. So this is the equivalent. You notice they do not have this folder anymore that they have underscore and score generated. They just bring it right next to it. So you can either, uh, this is the default setting by the way. If you wanted to, you can specify an output. So I could call this source slash schema types dot ts. And what will happen is it'll actually create, uh, and I need to do an equal sign, uh, equal. No, I'm just going to do dot slash. Um, generating query, no such file. Oh, okay, I, I messed that up. All right, let's just look at what the uh, code gen generate help file. All right, I forget. Oh, I, do I not even need to specify? Okay, yeah. So the output I don't is not even a flag. Okay, so that's what I was doing wrong. So let's bring this to the top. So I just need to get rid of the dash dash output. And now it's gonna create a schema types. And so here are where all my types are gonna be located. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose this version. So it's I'm not gonna co-locate it with where it is over here. Um, that's nice, but what I wanna do in my index.js is actually export the schema types export star from schema types reason for that is now in all my other folders or um, components I have access to all of these GraphQL types uh, which actually come in handy when you're doing stuff so that's what I would recommend but it's your choice you can also um, co-locate it with this so now we don't need this generated uh, we don't need this register mutation and in our index we just need to change we're getting all this from um, up two folders um, schema types so this is where we get all GraphQL types so this is gonna be a giant file um, with all of it in it now I can go ahead and I can remove the generate and copy this paste it in and now I'm gonna say yarn gen types so now it should both download the schema alright so I messed that up and that's because I don't need the quotations anymore. So now I should download the schema and generate the types and we need to rename this schema download and why don't we just keep the names consistent so code gen generate code gen generate all right and I might want to add like one little step at a uh, to this at the end and that's just to build the code so I might have another command which I call um, refresh types and really I should probably be doing it like that maybe because that's where I'm doing uh, common syntax or style so I want to run npm run gen types I'm gonna rename this and then after that, I'm going to do npm run build. So that's going to be the, our whole, um, so refresh types. So this is going to be our whole process. So every time I make a change now, I'm going to download the schema, update the types, and then build the TypeScript code, uh, all using the Apollo CLI tool. All right, so I'm happy with this part. Um, next thing that I wanted to fix was the tests on the server. So we can get rid of all this stuff. And if I get out of here, and I can actually just go to my other console, we don't need the server anymore. All right, so if I do yarn test right now, it's going to crash. And reason for that, well, I have to run the tests first. Uh, so I'm going to do all, and I'm just going to kill it right here. So notice how we are actually running the tests that are in the dist folder right here. 
So we do not want to do that. That's our built code. So if I come over to package.json, uh, and not in the controller, but in the server, so server package.json, I can actually specify the root directory for just, so I'm gonna say source. Uh, so now what'll happen is it'll look for tests inside of the source folder instead of looking all here. Now when I do that, I also have to update this relative path. So it's now going to be uh, dot slash test utils call setup. So now if I do yarn test and I were to run all the tests, uh, it should only run the tests inside of uh, the source. So we can see source modules and whatnot. Uh, and hopefully the test should pass now. Uh, so if you ran the test and they're failing, that's probably why, because they are running the dist. So now we don't see any more dist and we're good. Um, all right, so the next thing was when we build our web. So back to, so this is in our root directory. So I have two commands here that I made using Lerna. So here we built the code. And I'm actually just missing one of the things in the scope. So we should also have ab slash controller. Um, because this is a package that we use inside of our website, so we also should compile that code before we build it. Um, all right, so while we're importing, so this is inside of web register view. So all right, so I destructured uh, Ant design like this, but you guys had a nice suggestion that I didn't know about. So what you can do is to rename things. So I wanted to rename this import form you can use the as keyword so I can say as ant form icon button and I don't need to do this and I can also do that for for example item so item as form item and I can get rid of that um, and I guess uh, oh, I need to do um, it's from ant form so we can leave it like so alright so now I'm destructure. I'm renaming the form up here. So I renamed form to ant form instead of destructuring it down below and doing that. So that's a nice little shortcut. And then the last thing that I wanted to do was uh, with tslint. So I wanted to get rid of these things. So right now tslint is not happy that I uh, with the formatting here. And the reason for that is if we go to the tslint for our website, um, we're uh, grabbing the tslint globally and then doing tslint uh, react. We want to swap the order of that. And the reason for that is if we take a look at what our tslint looks like in the global package, uh, we have this config prettier. And when config prettier is used, you want to make sure it's the very last one because this is going to make sure all your styles work well with prettier. Uh, and so that was what's happening. Prettier was styling this in this way. Um, and now it's not complaining because basically Prettier turns off that rule for us, or at least that TSLint rule. All right, so that's all the changes I wanted to make in this video. So these are just some things that uh, were cropping up that I wanted to fix. Uh, so that's it for this, guys. I'll see you in the next one.